Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gurbuz. Welcome to my video on conducting independent sample t-tests using SPSS. First, let's try to figure out what the independent sample t-test is. We use independent sample t-test when we test difference between two independent groups. In this test, we have two independent groups, like an apple and orange. So, these two groups are independent to each other. For example, these two groups might be female and male for gender. Independent groups simply means one group cannot be a member of the other group. So, they are independent. The name of the test comes from this concept. So, by using independent sample t-test, we can compare two groups, for example, whether the female and male citizens' perception towards sustainable energy is different or not. So, typical alternative hypothesis for the independent sample t-test should be like that. H1, perception of sustainable energy significantly differs between female and male young citizens. So, in this hypothesis, we have two groups, female and male, and they are independent. And we have only one dependent variable, which is perception of sustainable energy. So, in this case, I should use independent sample tool test to test my H1 or alternative hypothesis. So let's jump to the SPSS to test this hypothesis. Okay, go to my SPSS data. This is my SPSS data for this analysis. First, just look at the my grouping variable, which is gender. I collect the values. As you see, we have male and female one for the male, two for the female, okay? This is important because we're gonna use this coding scheme during our analysis, okay? And this is also my mean perception, mean perception, which representing my dependent variable, okay? So to do analysis, let's go to analyze menu, okay? Then I should find the compare means, then I should collect independent sample t-test, Okay, and then this window pops up. Okay, so just reset this one. Okay, you will see this window like that. So, first of all, I should move my dependent variable, which is mean perception, to the right column. Okay, so just click this one and move it to the test variable window. And then I should move my gender into grouping variable box. Okay, then it is very important. I should tell the SPSS what is my coding scheme for gender. Okay, remember that it was one and two, one for the male and two for the female, right? So I will write here one and two. That will be enough for the SPSS. Okay, also we can check this one from here. So as you see, we have a one for the male and we have a two for the female okay so then i should just hit the okay and i should get these results from output okay this is my first table it's about the group statistic you can see the uh, groups male and female sample size for the male and female my means okay for the male and for the female my standard deviation and also, I have the standard error of mean for the each group, right? So, the below table, of course, is much more important for interpretation. This is my inferential statistic table for the independent t-test, okay? So, to make it simple, let's copy this table to the PowerPoint, and it will be easy for you, okay? So, let's go ahead and make it bigger, okay? Okay, so... This was my inferential statistics table for the independent sample t-test. So, as you see, guys, there are two kinds of rows here. The first row 
and the second row and also i have some t value df sig so which row okay i should pay attention okay for that reason first of all i should look at the okay homogeneity of variance this is the assumption of independent sample t test be reminded that each statistical analysis or test you know has some assumption the so for the independent sample t test one of the assumption of independent sample t test actually it requires the assumption of homogeneity of variance which means whether my groups female and male have the equal variance or not so this test level test actually test whether i have a you know uh, homogeneity of variance in terms of female or not so based on this test then i should decide which rows that i have to take consideration okay so first of all let's look at the lemon test so if the p value of the lemon test okay which is this one sig greater than 0 0.05 which is my alpha level okay which means that i have the equal variance among the groups in this case i should use the first row of the table for the interpretation okay so in this case i have a sig or p value greater than 0 0.05 for that reason i should look at this first row of the table for the interpretation okay so let's go ahead if it is, if it is the less than 0 0.05 if the 11 test okay pig srg uh, value or p value is less than 0 0.05 which is my alpha level it means that equal variance of my groups are not assumed for that reason i should look at the second row of the table which is here okay but in this case in this example my sig value actually is clearly greater than 0 0.05 which represent the equal variance assumed in terms of my groups for that reason in this case i should look at this first row of the table here okay so when you look at this first row as you see i have a t value okay which is minus 714 i have a degrees of freedom which is 434 remember that df or decrease of freedom always equal sample size minus one also i have a sig value or p value this is my p value so as you see my sig or p value is clearly greater than my accepted level which is 0 0.05 for this reason i can say that there is no significant difference between females and males in terms of perception of sustainable energy for that reason i should accept or assume my null hypothesis it means that my alternate hypothesis which is h1 should be rejected because i have no significant difference in terms of females and males okay so let's go to reporting issue I remember that that was my group statistic table from the spss output so based on the statistic i can write this text among valid responses there are 250 males and 186 females the average perception scale young male citizen is 3.75 it comes from here and 3.79 yeah that comes from here for young female citizens considering the perception are measured in five point liquid scale yes it indicates that both female and male citizens are generally positive towards the sustainable energy because their mean is greater than my midpoint which is three or my neutral point okay for that reason i can make such a uh, you know command and this 
actually tests come from group statistic but the inferential statistics table is much more important for me in terms of supporting or rejecting my alternative hypothesis so based on this independent sample t-test i can make a comment like that it is very brief and short but that is enough <laughs> i think so perception of sustainable energy did not significantly differ between female and male young citizen and then i should add my t value okay and my degrees of freedom and also my exact p value which is srg okay so those value comes from here this is my df should come to the parentheses and this is my t value and also this is my sig value should come to here so i have no differences because my p value sig value it's greater than my alpha level which is 0.05 alternatively you can also report these results like that at 95 percent confidence level we fail to reject the null hypothesis that the population mean on perception did not differ between female and male young citizen okay so based on these uh, findings or results i can say that my alternative hypothesis which is h1 is rejected because i don't have significant difference between female and males in terms of uh, perception of sustainable energy so that's all guys see you on the next video